Hey friends, Pastor Kim here from Maryville First United Methodist Church and we're here on Friday afternoon uh, Friday, finally Friday, yay, praise the Lord, it's finally Friday and we're here on night 15 of our study 66 books in 66 days, the overview of the books of the Bible. Last night we were in 2 Chronicles where uh, we learned about the exile to Babylon Despite uh, Judah's few good kings and timely reforms, the people never truly changed. Their evil continued, and finally God used the Babylonian Empire under Nebuchadnezzar to destroy Judah, destroy Jerusalem, and take the people captive into Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon destroyed the temple. The kings were gone, the temple was gone, and the people were removed. The nation was stripped to its very foundation, and that's where we find ourselves uh, as we move to the next book, uh, Ezra, uh, which was written to the exiles who returned from captivity. This was written sometime around 450, 450 BC, and it records the events from 538 to 450 BC. Ezra follows Second Chronicles as a history of the Jewish people a recording uh, of the return to the land after their captivity. And so the key verse that comes out of the book of Ezra is in chapter 6, verses 21 and 22. So the Israelites, who had returned from the exile, ate the Passover together with all who had separated themselves from the unclean practices of their Gentile neighbors in order to seek the Lord, the God of Israel. For seven days they celebrated with joy the Feast of Unleavened Bread, because the Lord had filled them with joy by changing the attitude of the king of Assyria so that he assisted them in the work on the house of God, the God of Israel. And so this book is broken out into two main sections. Uh, and they're based on the two returns. There was the first return, that was led by Zerubbabel. Now, Zerubbabel was a great leader and the one that was called by um, the king to lead the people on the first caravan uh, out of captivity back to Jerusalem uh, with the purpose of uh, rebuilding the temple. And so that is chapters 1 through chapter 6. And then chapter 7 through chapter 10 is the second group of exiles returning to the land led by Ezra. Now, Ezra returned to Jerusalem about 80 years after Zerubbabel, only to discover that the people had married pagan or foreign spouses. Uh, in the eyes of God, in the eyes of uh, the religious um, nation, this polluted the religious purity of the people and endangered the future of the nation. And so um, there was a struggle there uh, that Ezra had uh, getting the people to, uh, to turn back to God. You see, Ezra was a priest, he was a scribe, and he was a great leader. In fact, his name means help. That's the perfect leader to, that God could raise up at that time to help lead the people um, out of captivity and back home to Jerusalem. Um, Ezra, it's said that Ezra wrote most of First and Second Chronicles. He wrote the book of Ezra, the book of Nehemiah, and he wrote uh, Psalm 119, which is the longest psalm, very poetic long psalm that you'll find almost right in the middle of, uh, of the Bible. So Ezra uh, was um, a leader and a, a priest who knew God's word, but he not only knew God's word, he believed it and he obeyed it. And he fell into humility before God and prayed for the nation uh, with when he found that there was so much disobedience when he returned to Jerusalem with the second caravan. And he found the people that were living in Jerusalem had had fallen into uh, disobedience and fallen far away from God. And so in chapter 9, he offers this incredible prayer uh, to to God to help um, 
revitalize and, and bring the people back into right relationship with God. And so as a little summary, um, Second Chronicles ends with Cyrus, the king of Persia, asking for volunteers to, to return to Jerusalem to build a house for God. Ezra continues this account as two caravans of God's people were returning to Jerusalem. Zerubbabel, the leader of the first trip, was joined by 42,360 pilgrims who journeyed homeward. That's in chapter 2. After arriving, they began to build the altar and uh, the temple foundations, chapter 3. But opposition arose from the local inhabitants and a campaign of accusations and rumors temporarily halted the project, chapter 4. You find when you look at Zerubbabel's life, he struggled uh, gaining encouragement to keep the project going and he needed people placed around him that would push him to keep, keep building, keep building. So during this time, the prophets Haggai and Zechariah encouraged the people, as well as Zerubbabel, uh, into the work, which is chapter 5. And then finally, Darius decreed that the work should, should proceed unhindered. We find that in chapter 6. After a 58-year gap, Ezra led a group of Jews from Persia, armed with the decrees and the authority from Artaxerxes. Ezra's task was to administer the affairs of the land, and upon arriving, he learned of the sin, the intermarriage between God's people and their pagan neighbors. He wept and prayed for the nation. Chapter 9. Ezra's uh, example of humble confession led to a national revival. Chapter 10. Can you imagine um, seeing, seeing the nation fallen apart and going to God in prayer and everyone knows that it was you that, that knelt down before God humbly pouring it out so that God would hear and that it would cause the hearts of the people to repent and to return to God. Um, Ezra uh, was a man, uh, a man of God and a true hero. He was a model for Israel and he is a fitting model for us today. And so I want to uh, share a little bit more about Ezra and his life um, as we get into that. Uh, Ezra, his story is told in Ezra chapter 7 through 10, but he's also uh, in Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, which we'll study tomorrow night, uh, chapters 8 through 12. Uh, Ezra was full of uh, strengths and accomplishments. He committed to study and follow and teach God's word. He led the second group of exiles from Babylon to Jerusalem. He was concerned about keeping the details of God's commands in front of the people. And he was such a great leader. Uh, King Artaxerxes sent uh, him to Jerusalem to evaluate the situation to set up a religious education system and to return with first-hand report. And he worked right along the side of Nehemiah during the last spiritual awakening, awakening that's recorded in the Old Testament. And so there's some interesting strengths and accomplishments of Ezra's life. The lessons that we learn from Ezra's life is that um, a person's willingness to know and practice God's word will have a direct effect on how God uses his or her life. The starting place for serving God is a personal commitment to serve him today, even before knowing what that service will be. And so we find Ezra doing that. Ezra was, was made responsible and took, took uh, the leadership role uh, very seriously and brought along with it the teaching of God, teaching the people to be obedient and to return to God. Um, so uh, the vital statistics that come out of Ezra's life, that he was uh, in, in the places of Babylon and Jerusalem, the journey back to Jerusalem. Um, he was a scribe among the exiles in Babylon. He was a part of the king's envoy, and he was a great teacher. And uh, it's, it's really fun to read 
about the life of these uh, prophets and the priests that were in uh, the Old Testament. Um, Ezra achieved great things and made a significant impact because he had the right starting place for his actions and his life. That was God's word. The fact that he studied it seriously and applied it faithfully. He taught others what he learned about God and so that's why Ezra is a great model for us even today. And so I'm going to post uh, the, uh, the book of Ezra uh, from the uh, Bible Project video. I'll post that. If you have any questions as you watch my little overview and that overview, I encourage you uh, to ask those questions and we'll try to answer them as best we can. Hope you're all doing well. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.